Uh, the topic of my sermon today is gloom and darkness. And we find it in the book of Jude. Jude, a little background about this apostle Jude and the purpose as to why he wrote this book. He only wrote this book and it contains 25 verses. But we will look at the first 16 verses of the book. <clears throat> the purpose of him writing this book is to remind the church of the need for constant vigilance, the need for constant vigilance. The church needs to wake up. That's vigilance. We need to wake up and see, open our eyes and see what's going on around us. He had seen a lot of things which were going around, which were not good. So he wanted us to keep strong in faith. Faith was lacking. And he also wanted to oppose heresy which was going on in the church then and which is also going on right now. There is a lot of heresy going on in the church. Somebody said to me, the Jesuits have slipped into the church and they are spreading a wrong gospel. So Jude was directed by the Holy Spirit to write to then the churches of Hebrew. And this is exactly what is important for us. Then Jude is a brother to Jesus and James. And the background says he was not very close to Jesus. Because they were half brothers. These were sons of Joseph. And as I was reading for this lesson, I came across that uh, Jesus didn't have blood brothers. Mary didn't have any kids after Jesus was born. Maybe it's there, but I, I didn't say it. So he didn't have blood brothers. As the elder read the verse, but when we read those 25 verses, there is one important verse which sums everything in that book, and that is verse 3, I would like to read it. It says, dear friends, although although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation 
which uh, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Faith entrusted to the to us. Says, he says we need to contend about it. As I was reading, I also discovered that Jesus really loves us. Really, really. If we have never taken time, sometimes we take it for granted. Jesus loves us. That's why he died for us on the cross. It is through love he has for us. And we are living in times of gloom and darkness this time. There's a lot going around. <clears throat> it says, as we talk about this topic, gloom and darkness. As the sun rises every morning, the cold and dark night is banished by the warm and light of the day. As the sun rises, darkness runs away. And the whole day we have light. Because darkness and light, they, can, they cannot live together. And the vice versa is true. When light has been, and when darkness it's its turn, the light goes off. And what happens in the dark? The light slips away and gives chance to darkness. Over the western horizon, the sun set. Where the sun sets, the dark encroaches, and the chill of the evening sets on. Not everyone sleeps when the darkness comes. For some, darkness becomes a cover for evil action. This is where I think we all relate to that. Most of the things happen when it's dark. Most of the things. Because nobody sleeps. Not everybody sleeps. I have four nights I don't sleep at night. I would be up. But you can ask yourself, what will you be doing during those four days of not sleeping at night? As individuals, you try to ask yourself. And I'm sure you know what you will be doing during the dark hours. Are you doing some good for the Lord or are you pursuing your own likes? 
because you think there is nobody who is seeing you at that time. Then Jude, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, was introduced to writing what he wrote in the book. I would like to read <clears throat> the few verses of Jude. Uh, Jude 1, <clears throat> this one, says Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus, Jesus Christ, mercy and peace and love be yours in abundance. He goes on to say, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints, that is me and you. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. There are godless men who have changed the grace of our Lord into a little, into a license of immortality and deny Jesus Christ our only servant and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their position of authority, but abandoned their home, and their home is heaven. And those angels are a third which were thrown away from heaven with their master, the devil. These he has kept in darkness. This third bound with everlasting chain for judgment on the great day. They are waiting for the judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. We know what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring the slanderous accusation about him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do. They do not understand, and what things they do understand by instinct. Mm -hmm. 
like unreasoning animals. These are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's era. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blemish at, at your love's feast, eating with you without slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed on, their, on themselves, they are clouds without rain blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. There are wild waves of the sea forming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming without thousand, with thousand upon thousand of his holy ones to do what? To judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts that they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers. They are fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. So this are fault finders who do stuff to benefit themselves. It's these are the people Jude is talking about. He says they are grumblers. We have grumblers in the church even today. There is not, not even one thing they will agree which is, again, which is not what they think. They will grumble. They will always find fault, following after their own lust. And they will speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. These are the people we live by, and they make our day gloom, and we stay in darkness. Because all we will do as a family, or families in different churches, is to crumble. Is to want to be seen to be better than anybody else. Lo and behold, Romans says, all of us have sinned. Not some, but all of us, we have sinned. So he is, Jude is warning us here says he saw 
the spiritual darkness being introduced by some participants in the life of the church, like verse 12 has said. The people were saying that God forgives, forgiveness allows us to live immoral lives. That's fake to live moral lives. That's verse 4 is telling us what these people, the grumblers, the fault finders, ATC, they preach that the Bible tells us that such people are false teachers. They will push, that's why it says, here it says arrogantly. They will make it a point what, what they are saying is understood by everybody and everybody hearkens to it and live by it. But it's against what the Lord says. The fate of such people was determined long ago when plan of salvation was put in place. What is that fate of being grumblers and making people do what you think is right, which is not what the Bible says. And we go on, <clears throat> it says, Jude backed his dreadful assertions by citing some of the numerous examples. God's righteousness, God's righteous judgment, judgment that has been meted out to the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority. You listen to the devil talking to you and you arrogantly do what he tells, they tell you to do. It says the fate of such people has been determined long time ago. They are widening stars, reading for everlasting gloom and darkness. I want to read again verse 4. Verse 4 says, For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secret, secretly saints. For certain men, <coughs> sorry, for certain men whose condemnation was written about long time ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for morality and deny Jesus Christ, our only servant and Lord. Their fate has been put into place. 
these godless men who live with us, who we listen to, and if not by the message of God, will be laid aside. We will follow and do what they are saying. Because they are godless, they are not giving godly things, which will save us, but which will make us lost. Because they are godless. It says here again, <clears throat> Jude backed his dreadful assertion by citing some of the numerous examples God's righteous judgment. Judgment had been meted out of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring. We are waiting for judgment. And judgment is not a bad thing if you live by what or by the standards of God. We should not be afraid of it. But as we read here about Sodom and Gomorrah, they are sinning was overflowing even to the other cities surrounding them. And hence, there was punishment, guarded judgment, judged them. And Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. So Judea is telling us to watch out. What he was going to write about, the Holy Spirit put a stop and said, you better write about this. And this is what is going on. Let's not take ourselves out of the light and put ourselves in the dark. With God's help, we'll be victors. Only with God's help, we need to turn a deaf ear to the godless people who wants to break us into being lost? And for sure, we will be lost if we hearken to them. And you doesn't stop there. He says, Sodom and Gomorrah, they are seen with sexual immorality. That is in verse 7. And to those who followed the examples of such evil men like Cain, we know what happened to Cain, and we know what he did. Those are examples of godless. If God is not the ruler of your life, this is what you do, what Cain did. Cain had a dead conscience when he killed his brother. And 
and not him alone. We have Balaam. We know what he did. He put a curse to the Israelites for money and fame. What about Korah? He also mentions Korah. And he says, such will perish because of their rebellion. Jude demonstrates, as we can see, through his, his writing. He demonstrates that the godless barrenness, the emptiness, the hopelessness of the behavior. can be put straight only by Jesus Christ. Let Jesus come into your heart. The Bible tells us that when God is in your heart, you have life eternal. And life eternal is what we need right now in this hour of gloom. You look around, you listen, you see nothing is good these days. There's a lot of killing. It's only done by godless people. And then he also mentions that the rich will have the last say in our lives. We have read about that or studied in our court list. The rich will have the last words. But they shouldn't decide our life. They shouldn't decide for us. They were given the power of choice, and everyone else here has been given the power of choice. Don't let the godless man decide the fate of your life. Let Jesus, who died on the cross, decide your life. He will take you out of the gloom only when he lives in your heart. Darkness and light, they cannot live together. So when Jesus is in your life, the devil runs away. And by the way, the, prof the spirit of prophet says, at the call of the name of Jesus, certain faints. So when we are calling Jesus every time, the devil will run away. The good example is when Jesus was in the grave. And when the angel came to roll away the stone, there was great light. Great light that made the devil and his angels to flee from the grave. And then they started 
organizing lies, what, what they were going to say. And there were the false teachers going around, but Jesus is always the winner in whatever case. What did Jesus do? God raised the dead. And they became witness. They witnessed and they were speaking about Jesus being risen. Brothers and sisters, let's lay our treasures. Let's lay our lives in Jesus. And Jesus has promised that he will never leave us. Whatever we get ourselves into, he still says, I will never leave you. That small voice will always speak. He says, fear not. Don't be, don't be dismayed. I will be with you till the end. God is, Jesus is going to be with us till he comes to take us home. Saints, we are homeward bound. We are homeward bound. All we need to do is to hold on, is to trust, is to obey. <clears throat>